I'm going to help you. Eight o'clock in the morning. I'll call your mother myself. What is it, Mr. Wright? The fire chief. Where is it? Got past the gate. Go 10! Go 10! Is it dead clock? Get those chains off the door. The enemy is here. Before it's all got a lock, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark, you're under arrest. For what? Basically for being an asshole, but specifically for conspiracy to violate the fire code. I got no problem with the fire code, Chief. The only problem here is you. And your problem is your mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the jury, members of the Road the Tape film crew, class is in session. Yes, for some of you who do not know who I am, I welcome you to class today. I am your professor, Manager Marty, Joe Clark. Oh yes, and today class, we're going to have a boxing history lesson. And let me be more specific. Because in this class, as you already know, we discuss topics that are beneath the surface. We lift up the rug and every single subject matter that is swept underneath that rug, we sweep it back out and we shed light on it. Oh, yes, we do. Know why we shed light on it? Because there is a spiritual principle in the scriptures that says that a candle that is lit is not effective if it's hidden underneath a bed. And so we pull that candle out from underneath the bed so the light can illuminate the entire world. And I'm talking about with truth. In this class, we dive deep into the sea and the waters of truth. So I'm glad that you were able to make it to class today. Now, when I say that I'm going to provide you with a boxing history lesson, I am talking about more specifically about the explosive and unexpected power in the second and third round. Class is in session, people. Big round for better BF. There it is, film doesn't lie. There you go, boxing gyms overhand right, right over the top of the jab of Smith. Smith has a tendency of throwing the jab from the wrong position or wrong distance at mid-range. Look at this on the inside here in round two. Big exchange, oh, he gets him again! Another clubbing shot from Archer Benefield. Now I need every last one of you, to please do yourselves a favor and do me, the professor, a favor. Please take out a pen and a notepad so that you can take notes. Because I know sometimes when I talk, a lot of times the information that I provide is so deep. It's hard for people to process it in just one exposure. So take out your pen, take out your notepad and let the professor teach you something that you will never hear anywhere else on YouTube. I guarantee you that. Now, let's look at the history in boxing of this explosive and unexpected power in the second or third round. And the reason why I am targeting this explosive and unexpected power in the second and third round because there are some similarities between specific fighters who I personally believe who has had their performance enhanced in the sport of boxing in recent years. Let's go back just, uh, how about a decade? Now there's way more fighters, but these particular fighters that we are going to discuss in our subject matter well, they're most notable, and there's a reason for it. So let me give you the history 
of this explosive and unexpected power in the second and third round. And then I am going to drive home some similarities. So I can't tell you what substance any athlete is on when it comes to the banned substance list. But I can tell you that as the professor, that I know when a fighter's performance is enhanced. You'll be the judge, whether it's illegal or, or legal, because I'm not the expert. Maybe you are. Now, let's get back to this history lesson. When we talk about the explosive, unexpected power in the second or third round, Manny Pacquiao fought Miguel Cotto. Y'all remember that? And he knocked Miguel Cotto down in the third round. How about when Manny Pacquiao fought Sugar Shane Mosley? You remember that? And he knocked Sugar Shane Mosley down in the third round. How about when Manny Pacquiao fought Lucas Matisse? Y'all remember that? He knocked him down in the third round. Oh, it doesn't stop there. Remember when Manny Pacquiao knocked out Ricky Hatton with one punch in the second round? How about when Manny Pacquiao fought Chris Algieri and he knocked him down? In the second round. Y'all remember that? <laughs> well, you just heard that Arthur Bitterbeef, he knocked down Joe Smith in the second round. How about Alicia Bumgarner when she fought Mechaled? She knocked her down in the third round. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Yeah, I had to pause for a second because I wanted to make sure you all got an opportunity to process all of that information. Now, let's get down to some fighters. I'm going to name some fighters and I want you all to rhetorically acknowledge whether you recognize these names. Casey Coft, Julian Williams, Demetrius Andre, Mario Barrios, Devin Haney, Terrence Crawford. Great. Now that you've re rhetorically acknowledged that you recognize those names, well, there is something that these fighters have in common. In fact, there's two things that these fighters have in common. Number one, they're all under the snack program whose company is ran and led and facilitated by the infamous Victor Conti. And the second thing that these snack fighters have in common is they have all been bit by the bug of explosive and unexpected power in the second or third round. You don't believe me? You don't want to take my word for it? Don't take my word for it. Roll the tape. Now that we've rolled the tape, let's roll the tape with these facts. Well, when Casey coughed for Aracera, she knocked her down and TKO'd her in the second round. How about when Julius Williams fought Jared Hurd? He knocked him down in the second round. What about... Demetrius Andre, when he fought Damon Nicholson, he knocked him down in the second round. What about Mario Barrios, when he fought your Danis Ugas, he knocked him down in the second round. What about Devin Haney, when he fought Regis Progress, he knocked him down in the third round. And then, of course, Terrence Crawford, Fort Errol Spence and knocked him down in the second round. <laughs> you see, I keep trying to teach y'all and some of you are failing the class. And what I'm going to give you an opportunity to do is make it up. And this is how you all that are failing the class can make it up. You can come back to the next class. I'm going to have a specific class designated just for you because I want you to come back and I want you to learn and pass the test that I'm going to give you.
Now, for all of you who come to class, who complete the homework assignments, and who are passing, I want to congratulate you. But you know what? There's going to still be some people who criticize my classes, who demean my classes, who discredit me as a professor, and that's okay because time has a way of exposing the truth. And when time exposes the truth, time waits for no man. You're just going to have to accept it. And until then, I'll see you all in the next class. Don't take my word for it. Roll the tape.